Hey everyone, in this video we're going to learn how to catch multiple exceptions. So for one try block, you can have several catch blocks to catch multiple exceptions, but please take note that the order of these catch blocks makes a difference. So for this example, I'm going to make a small program that asks the user to enter two integers and then it's going to try to divide one into the other. So let's create a scanner object first called keyboard to read user input from the system standard input stream. We're going to need to import scanner to do this. So hover the mouse over the scanner class, click import, and it puts this import statement up at the top. All right, so let us now ask the user, enter a number. And we'll say int x is going to be keyboard dot next int to capture that number and store it in x. And let's do that again. I'm going to copy this code and paste it. Enter another number and change x to y because I already have a variable called x. And down here we will print out the value of x of x and the divided by sign and y is x and this is going to be x divided by y. Let's print that out. Let's just make sure this works first. Let's run the program. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. All right. And let's make sure that it crashes when I do 6 divided by 0. Okay, it does crash. And here's another way where the program could crash, another type of runtime exception. Enter a number, 5, F-I-V-E. That's a number, isn't it? And it crashes again. Input mismatch exception. So we had the divide by 0 exception and an input mismatch exception. Two possible things that can go wrong in a simple little program. How do we catch for both of them? Let's find out. This is the part that's throwing the input mismatch exception. And this part right here is throwing the divide by zero exception. So let's surround everything with the giant try block. Let's try this and close the try block and let's indent everything inside. Easiest way to do it, control A to highlight everything, control I to indent. And let's add the first catch block. Catch input mismatch exception. Catch that, we'll call it E for the name of the exception. And here we'll just print out you entered an invalid integer. Okay, and then to catch, uh, also don't forget to import input mismatch exception. So click on the quick fix, import it. It'll add that statement up at the top. And then also we wanted to catch for the divide by zero exception. Let me make sure that was the correct name. Oh, I'm sorry, it was an arithmetic exception. So let's copy that. And let's and to do that, you just simply add another catch block just like this. You can even give it the same name because it's a separate catch block. So these two E's are distinct. Print a quick message. You cannot divide by zero. And now it handles both things. One try block can have multiple catch blocks. Some other problem that we weren't aware of is happening in here and we didn't know what to catch for. You could add a third catch block that just catches exception or just catches throwable which will catch everything and we could print out some other issue happened that we don't know about. So let's run the program and make sure everything is working. Enter number six and zero. Can't divide by zero. Let's run it again. Five, you entered an invalid integer. So everything is working. And I can't think of a way to get it to throw this one. But if some other problem happened, like let's say you, let's just force it to do something. 
let's go back to the array that we that we created in a previous video. So here's a one element array, and let's set array at index four to seven, which doesn't make sense, but run the program. And some it just right away goes to that catch block. Some other issue happened, and that was caught here. And the order does matter because you want the catch block that's most likely to happen up at the top. And you don't want to have throwable as your catch block at the top because it'll cause an issue. Because this will actually catch everything because it's the super class of all exception classes. Throwable is actually a super class of input mismatch exception and arithmetic exception. So by having that as your first catch block, this becomes unreachable code. Right there, unreachable catch block. It'll never make its way down here because this catch block catches everything. And you're probably wondering, well, why don't I just catch throwable or exception to catch everything and not have to worry about these more specific types of catch blocks? And the reason is that you, let me undo this, the reason that you want more specific catch blocks is because you may want to have a more specific answer on what went wrong. If you just wrote some other some issue happened, then you don't know whether it was an arithmetic exception or whether it was an input mismatch ex exception. You want to pin down exactly what caused the exception so that later on you can troubleshoot the program and fix it a lot easier than just knowing that some issue happened that you're unaware of. So have more specific catch blocks and it'll make troubleshooting a lot easier.